how's it going today guys so thank you for clicking on the video um so i just want to say today's video takes place in the state of maine in uh the eastern united states not far from our previous story which took place in indiana uh if you haven't not seen that video yet please go watch it i'll leave i'll leave a link in the description down below and um yeah so also i wanted to say a cool little announcement for next month i'll be starting to release true crime stories and it's going to mainly be towards um probably serial killers that's what i'm kind of thinking um and yeah also i wanted to apologize for today's quality um not the greatest i'll be honest with you um sound effects are a little few and far between um not as abundant as the last video um, even then, I, I could have added, like, you know, I was, I was finding sound effects for the last video today, and I was like, holy crap, this could have worked for the last video. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, um, so I have two little gifts for you. I have a little intro um, that I worked on. It's from American Werewolf in London. And, uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video today. And if you make it to the end of the video, you'll also get to see another clip from American Werewolf in London. So yeah, guys, see you later. Bye. Hey, wait a minute. We're lost. Oh, shit, David. What is that? I don't know. Come on. Come on, where? Anywhere. I think we should just keep moving. moving. It's circling us. Ah, oh, fuck. What's the plan? Plan? Let's just keep walking. That's right, a lovely stroll on the moors. Tra la 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 la. Isn't this fun? <laughs> it's in front of us. You think it's a dog? Oh, shit. What is it? Yeah. It's a sheepdog or something. Come on, turn slowly. Let's walk away. Nice doggy. Good boy. Come on, Jack. Walk away. Walking away, yes. Here we are, walking away. The Martin family had downsized their lives. A workplace injury had devastated Eric, and his wife, Shelley, had to leave her job to take care of him. As a result, they were looking for a less expensive place to live. Shelley had found a beautiful older farm in Palmyra, Maine, and it was exactly what they needed. It was surrounded by dense woods, lots of land for potential livestock. Eric's family had always been hunters, and his fairly extensive, quote for quote, collection of guns was a bone of contention with Shelley. She would not allow them in the house. So in order to kind of follow these rules that Shelley had, uh, with the help of Eric's son, Sean, Eric built a strong box to hold the guns under lock and key in the barn, which was adjacent to the house. Eric and Shelley had a routine of evening coffee on the sheltered porch, provided it wasn't too cold out. One night, they noticed a strange pulsating light down past the tree line. At first, Sean thought it was just a poacher with a flashlight, but something didn't seem right. Shelley thought it was unnatural and... So with that, Eric and Sean headed out into the field to investigate. As they approached the woods, the lights went out. And at that moment, that's when they realized how quiet it was. The snap of a tree branch could be heard for miles. Eric sent Sean around with his flashlight, hoping to catch any potential poacher or whoever it was just to scare them off their property. Eric felt something far beyond any fear he'd ever felt hunting in this moment. All Eric and Sean found was each other, not even a track on the ground to give them a hint of what they had seen. Chelsea's boyfriend Nathan came for a visit and they decided to go for a walk with the dogs. The dogs ran out ahead of them catching a scent and they ran right into the woods where previous the night before, Sean and Eric saw these lights. When Chelsea and Nathan caught up with the dogs, they were rooting around by this large hole in the ground. Nathan thought it was like an overly round hole that had been dug with care. Chelsea had a bad feeling about the whole thing and just urged him to leave. Finally, 
he agreed. And he was thinking to himself, these are hunting dogs. They don't just go chasing after a wild goose. They go after something. So he was thinking, what did the dogs find? It was Memorial Day weekend and Shally was making the evening coffee. The dogs didn't want to go outside to their pen and something just wasn't right. Eric noticed that it was particularly quiet on that misty night when Shelly came out with a cup of coffee and he kind of mentioned towards it and she kind of just shrugged it off. She's like, oh, you know, whatever. And they go on with whatever they were talking about. And all of a sudden, Eric kind of goes, shine your flashlight to the north of the property here. I think there's something out there. And so she picks up her flashlight, shines it into the property and sure enough, doesn't see anything. And then all of a sudden, this feeling of just sheer, absolute, just kind of uncertainty overcomes Eric. And he began to usher Shelley into the house. She protested, but when she heard some rustling in the distance, accompanied by five sets of eyes looking back at them, she realized the danger. They rush into the house and they locked the door. Eric knew it wasn't a bear, but it was huge and dangerous. The guns were in the barn, and Eric wasn't too sure his family was safe in the house. Eric wanted to go get the guns, but Shelley told him to stay. She went up to Chelsea's room and woke up her daughter, and she was like, look, 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 like, look at these, you know, five creatures. And so they look out the window, and they see, you know, like these five creatures kind of huddled around in a circle, like if they're having like a little, you know, kind of plan, you know. And Chelsea was half awake when she looked out the window, but laid back down and kind of went, oh, cool, and went back to sleep. All five of the creatures, when Shelley went back to the window, were still there. And then all of a sudden... One stood on its hind legs and looked right at Shelley. Understandably, Eric felt an instinct to protect his family. With the creatures in the distance, he thought he might be able to get the family car backed up close enough to get them out. Even with his disability, Eric went outside. Shelley went through the house, closing the windows. She finally found the two hunting dogs hiding in a shadowed corner. If the dogs were scared... So is Shelley. When Eric reached the porch, he realized that he might have the distance to get there. It was going to be the longest 20 feet of his life. He started to slowly walk towards the car. When he finally reached it, grabbing the keys and trying to unlock the door. The motion sensor lights popped on. Eric was frightened and very exposed. Suddenly... He was face to face with one of the creatures. It tried to reach into the light, but something stopped it. It bolted out into the darkness, like if it was scared or hurt. Eric made for the house as quickly as he could. They decided to call the police, hoping for someone else to drive in while they remained sheltered. The police didn't take them seriously, telling Shelley to close the windows, lock the doors, Nobody was coming. They were on their own. Shelley set up a view from Chelsea's window. She could see the whole farm from there. Eric was downstairs, frustrated and upset. Then it occurred to him that the creatures were either afraid of or hurt by the light. That had to be why they didn't attack him. He made the decision to use that light to get out to the barn and fetch a gun. He went out, flailed his arms in a desperate attempt to trigger the motion sensor. When the light came on, Eric realized that the eyes were staring back at him, surrounding him. Eric was being hunted. He had to get back into the house. He got back as quickly as he could, barely making it before the light went out. Shelley heard them approach. They were on the other side of the wall, and if they wanted it to get in, they were going to get in. 
Her family was being held hostage in their own house by these creatures. They weren't able to get the guns. They weren't able to have any police come. They, what were they going to do? Grabbing every sharp implement they could find, Shelley went and woke Chelsea. They needed all hands on deck and awake and alert. They all went into the master bedroom and laid on top of the bed, armed, waiting on daylight to come. When they heard the creatures outside, they were petrified. The only thing between the Martins and the creatures was the bedroom window. They listened for eight hours as these creatures tried to burrow into their house and make all types of ungodly noises and started scratching their door and tried to hit their windows and hit the walls. And finally, the morning came. They could finally breathe a sigh of relief. The creatures were gone. Eric called Sean, who came over and helped look for tracks. The tracks they did find were huge, with enormous claws. They showed a creature who could walk on two feet, bipedal, if you will. These creatures had been hunting, stalking. Were they werewolves? Skinwalkers? Aliens, ghost, to this day, nobody knows. Hey everybody, so thank you for watching today's video. Um, I just wanted to apologize if, uh, for most of my audio uh, equipment. Uh, by When I say that, I literally mean my Apple headphones. So if there's a little bit of feedback from something eh, somewhere along the video that I haven't caught, I do apologize. Um, I am trying to put out the best quality content that I can that is available to me, you know, with the technology that I have. So I do appreciate the patience. Um, I, I also do feel that I am taking this a little too seriously for the amount of uh, people that are watching the videos. But hey, you never know. My luck can change. So, um, yeah. So I had like a little small issue with this story. Um involving Chelsea. So I, I, you know, I just wanted to put in my two cents and kind of say, I don't really believe this story, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's a great story. It's a great, you know, Halloween type environment story, you know, great. Um, however, I just don't believe it because the, when Chelsea and Nathan in the story went to the hole and, you know, they were, Chelsea was unnerved by it, quote for quote. And, um, Later on, when her mom came and waked her up in her room, and she was like, hey, you know, like, we'll look at these freaking creatures out in your yard. The way that she just kind of went, cool. Cool story, man. And went back to sleep. For me, I would have put two and two together at that moment. I would have been like, holy shit, I found a hole in the forest. Holy shit, these might be the things that lived in that hole. We were that close to that. Holy hell. No, 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 no. She went, cool story, bro. So that kind of sounds like to me that it was most likely, I don't, I don't know why this family would have made it up. I mean, people have their reasons, right? So, but I don't know. I definitely don't believe, I definitely don't really buy this story. Just there's a couple of details in the story that were just like, oh, it's a little weird. So anyway, um, thank you for making it to the end of the video. And, um, Hope you guys have a good one. And uh, oh, yes, by the way, here's your gift for making it to the end of the video. I don't know. I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, oh! Oh! You really scared me, you shithead. You couldn't help me up or what? <laughs> <laughs> Jack.